SHMAP is a tool that helps modelers and medicinal chemists understand the role of water in molecular interactions, like ligand binding. It provides users with insight on critical features of a binding site. It predicts where and how neighboring waters can influence the binding of a ligand, and it can generate ligand modification hypothesis designed to better exploit specific regions of solvent in a binding site. SHMAP does this using semi-continuum electrostatics theory, which I'll explain on the next slide. It can distinguish easily between different types of water sites. There are hydrophilic sites, where water is tightly bound and structured, and hydrophobic sites, where water is loosely bound and often disordered. It can also identify good and poor van der Waals to water and regions where water is either stabilizing or destabilizing the binding event. We'll be using this color scheme where hydrophilic sites are in gold and hydrophobic sites are in purple. Semi-continuum solvation involves augmenting continuum dielectric with a single explicit probe water. We fill our region of interest, like a binding site, with a high dielectric continuum and use a single explicit probe water at a specific site to interact with both the continuum, which is a water-water interaction, and also with the protein and other molecules in its neighborhood. We sample many orientations of a water at a given point building up an energy for each orientation. And from the spectrum of these energies, we can calculate free energies and other properties of the solvent. Typically, we focus not on free energy itself, but a relative free energy, which is a difference between the free energy of our water probe which is a proxy for any polar group, and another water, which is uncharged. This is a proxy for a hydrophobic group. It's like a, meth a methylene group. The difference between our charged water and our uncharged water allows us to distinguish polar from hydrophobic sites. One way of thinking about these difference energies is to realize that since the uncharged water has exactly the same shape and the same atoms as the charged water, the van der Waals cancel. So these will have to be analyzed separately. Where the water is favored, where the free energy difference is less than zero, this is typically where there is a strong electrostatic interaction and is typically enthalpy driven. Where the uncharged probe, where the uncharged water is favored, where free energy difference is positive, we have either no electrostatics, so the energy is driven by a desolvation penalty, or just weak interactions, uh, electrostatic interactions. And this typically arises, um, gives rise to an entropy difference. Here, we've actually used SHMAP to identify key waters in the APO pocket from grid results. You can see around the edges in gold are areas where water is close enough to the protein pocket to make strong interactions. And these interactions often structure water such that only um, one or two orientations predominate. In the center, in purple, are regions where there are only weak interactions and where the uncharged probe is more favored. This, these are areas where it's obvious to see that the probe is very disordered. In our experience, high affinity ligands put polar groups 
in negative regions and nonpolar groups in the positive regions. You can see how well this ligand adopts similar geometry to what the solvent was doing in the binding site in the polar regions and how it puts a nonpolar uh, aromatic ring in this region where the nonpolar um, probe, the uncharged probe, predominate in purple. We can actually run SHMAP very quickly at specific coordinates. In this case, just at the coordinates of the ligand atoms. Um, it's a quick sampling. It's not a thorough sampling, but it's very fast. It allows us to do a survey in just one to two minutes. Now, what do we do about the water that is left in the complex after our ligand bonds? And what can Schmapp tell us about that? Does this water help or hurt binding? The way we understand that is through a concept we call stabilization. Basically, it's the free energy of the solvent in the binding reaction. We calculate this by simply subtracting the free energy difference for the complex um, by the free energy difference for the APO and the ligand. Stabilization is, uh, results in a much simpler and cleaner perspective than the difference free energy because many regions cancel. You're left with a much more focused view. What cancels is the additive components, and what we're left with is just cooperative energies of binding in the solvent. In the figure shown here, the two large yellow blobs that are near the amine are regions where water is actually helping binding. In purple, which in this figure is only in a small region, water would be destabilizing binding. How do we use this? Well, in regions where water stabilizes the complex, we can either leave it alone because it is helping, or we can try to mimic the, the, that water with our uh, modification. In regions where the water is destabilizing the complex, we, the obvious thing to do is to try to displace it. But it's also possible to simply improve it, to try to turn it from a destabilizing to a stabilizing water. A new way to deal with, uh, to run SHMAP and to understand what SHMAP has to tell you about your binding site is with a tool called Game Plan. It analyzes consistency between the pocket environment and ligand chemistry. In this case, the large yellow ball shows a region where there's a very good polar match to the binding site. The green balls all along the um, ligand indicate strong van der Waals interactions in the APO pocket. And the little purple tops are, are an indicator uh, that this ligand is more polar at this site than the, the solvent was in the APO pocket. Game plan can also explore small ligand modifications um, in up to two bonds away from the ligand. In the example shown here, uh, it suggests a, a two-bond uh, ligand, two-bond uh, moiety that picks up a good polar uh, interaction with the binding site. Game plan is also very fast. In 10 to 20 minutes, you can analyze your binding site and um, be provided with a set of hypotheses for ways in which you might modify your ligand. Compare with water map. SHMAP can systematically analyze um, binding uh, solvent sites, even in areas where molecular dynamics waters would 
not reach in any reasonable amount of time. And because we can focus to just regions of interest, we can calculate much faster. GRID is a very similar sampling method using an explicit probe and uh, different probe orientations to, to sample enthalpy in a binding site. But SHMAP is more important, uh, informative than GRID. Here we're showing the binding site of ER beta, and we've placed an ER beta uh, ligand in the binding site for comparison. You can see that the SHMAP shows a large purple region where the uncharged probe would predominate um, that's being occupied by the ligand with um, a set of aromatic rings. And over to one side, SHMAP is showing uh, an area where the solvent makes strong interactions with uh, the binding site in gold. ER beta requires a donor at only one end of the ligand, and SHMAP clearly distinguishes the two sides of this ligand. You can see the difference very clearly. GRID misses this difference. It shows energies for both sides of this pocket that are fairly similar. Why is this? GRID has the structuring effects that um, of, of using explicit probe in the same way that SHMAP does, but it misses this difference. Well, when we modify SHMAP to um, turn off the Poisson Boltzmann electrostatics, we get a very similar picture to what GRID produces. This tells us that it's actually the continuum combined with an explicit probe that really makes a difference and can um, give us the extra perspective we need to understand a binding site. Thank you. I hope this gives you a good uh, overview of SHMAP. Goodbye.